welcome back to my channel. Let us really quick address the elephant in the room. If you were wondering how I got this wonderful festive look, I did film this for a get ready with me for Christmas day. So that'll be up on the 25th for Vlogmas. And I did use the Give Me Glow Christmas morning palette. I did pick this up last year when it launched and I thought, what a perfect palette to whip out on Christmas Day and spread some joy and cheer. So if you guys are curious or you just want to get ready with me on Christmas Day before you head out to celebrate with your family, that video will be up on the 25th at 6 a.m. So I look forward to seeing all of you there so we can all get ready together and celebrate. And oh my gosh, it's such a wonderful time of year and I am so behind on my Will I Bite videos, you guys, I tried to film this video yesterday and I felt like I had been talking for an hour. And I just had like such low energy in that video that I just didn't feel like I was doing the situation justice. So I decided to refilm this. So here we are, take two. And there's so many new releases that I decided that I just needed to focus on what was important to me. Otherwise we were gonna be here all day. The other thing I need to tell you guys is I am filming on my new camera. This is my first video that's going live from my new camera. I was so fortunate. My husband decided that for Christmas and my birthday this year, he was gonna get me a new camera and he got me a Canon 90D. So we are coming at you in 4K and I'm looking at myself in the viewfinder right now and I feel like I look very orange. I'm a little bit freaked out about that, but. Hopefully it's just the lighting thing and it'll be fine. <laughs> if I do look orange in editing, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> but hopefully this means that you guys are gonna have much clearer quality. You're definitely gonna see every imperfection, every pore, every zit, every pimple. It's gonna be in 4K for your viewing pleasure. But I don't know, I'm excited. It's, uh, it's a lot because it's like new technology and it's got like, different modes and like I had to get a new SD card and like I don't know it's like a lot you guys it's a lot and let me tell you cameras are so spendy this one costs more than I've made on my YouTube channel this year so I am very grateful for him um, for doing this for me and yeah he is definitely the number one fan of Karen Harris makeup so big shout out to him and yeah, let's get into it. I'm gonna use Beauty News today just to kind of switch it up. I feel like I use Trend Mode all the time and I feel like some of these other accounts talk about things a little bit different or have different new releases that they want to highlight. So I thought, let me try someone new, switch things up, see how it goes. Okay, so the first thing I see on Beauty News is a new palette by Tarte Cosmetics. This is a Spicy Betch Press Pigment Palette. She's here and she's spicy. Tarte Spicy Betch Pressed Pigment Palette is a hotter than hot pressed pigment palette with eight smoking shades in a mix of orange, yellow, and red tone shades. Mix of eight mattes and metallics infused with Amazonian clay for maximum blendability, pigment, and wear. So it's got eight shades, it's $24, and it's available on Tarte's website right now. I honestly, I think the marketing is cute. I love that they did the chili peppers in the background. I think that's very interesting. It has like a real spicy vibe to it. As far as the shades go, I feel like I definitely have all of these shades. It's very much a run in the mill palette that we kind of all already have, but I think it's cool. I think it's a uh, gimmicky, but I like the marketing to be honest. So that's my thoughts on that. And then this, I got really excited. I feel like an clown because I got really excited because I thought Colored Rain was coming out with a new eyeshadow palette and that it was gonna be this humongous eyeshadow palette because I love the Colored Rain eyeshadow formula, but alas, it's not a new eyeshadow palette. It's just that they're coming out with a, basically an eyeshadow organizer. So it's called the Book of Shades Eyeshadow Organizer, and it's gonna hold about 72 shadows. So they're basically marketing it as a way to store and organize your shadows and says it's launching December 27th for VIPs with full launch happening 3rd of January on Colored Rain and it'll be $42. So I have one of Colored Rain's big magnetic palettes and 
at one time I was able to fit all of my single eyeshadows in that b big giant palette um, but now I have all of my eyeshadow palettes in those smaller Ulta Z palettes which I like because I can curate like color stories so I go back and forth between how I want to organize my shadows. I feel like there is a single eyeshadow declutter in my future. I just haven't like mustered up the energy to film that because I feel like I want to film it on our dining table upstairs just so I can have all the shadows kind of like out and I want to swatch all of them and I just know it's going to be like a whole project. So I haven't quite mustered up the energy for that one yet. But this, I think, is nice. I like the idea. I just don't see myself getting use out of something like this because I like to have things more curated and therefore I don't see the need for this. But I do think it's a good idea. And I'm glad a brand like Colored Rain is coming out with more options for customers. And then, just when we thought ColourPop was done, they are coming out with a new... 30 shade palette and it's called the what is this called it's all good that's what this palette is called and I honestly looking at the swatches I don't hate it I really like some of these shades it kind of reminds me of the spicy bitch palette that Tarte just came out with but this one is launching on the 26th and I'm guessing it's going to be in that $40 range I did pick up their bare essentials or something palette as a Christmas gift to my friend and I really hope she liked it she's already got it so I'm not spoiling anything for her but I just thought that was such a great go-to palette for somebody that loves neutrals so I really do hope she is enjoying that one but yeah this one is cute I am considering going on a Colourpop no buy for 2020 just because I feel like it's one of those brands that gets me all the time like I'm such a sucker for Colourpop that I'm like oh cute new palette it's only $18 sweet let me get it you know and I do that constantly throughout the year so I'm kind of thinking about maybe potentially adding them to a no buy or maybe just doing like one order a month some kind of restriction still working on all of that for 2020 we'll see how it goes and of course Pat McGrath is launching a new palette who would have thunk so this is the new mothership palette for the lunar new year called the Golden Opulence and honestly this packaging is very very attractive but the shades in the palette I feel like don't look that unique so for $65 I think I can pass on this plus my Star Wars palettes just shipped so you will see videos on those after the holidays after Christmas because I think the one palette gets here on like the 26th of December so maybe I'll be able to do a video like on my birthday um, with those palettes but definitely make sure you subscribe if you are watching my channel for the first time so you are notified when I upload those videos. So Morphe is launching a New Year's Eve collection and honestly like trust me I'm the first person to shit on Morphe but I like this direction that they're taking. I like that they did a collection. New Year's Eve is so fun like Definitely a time where everyone loves to do glam makeup and sparkles and stuff like that. So I get that part. I like that it's not a huge bulky palette. I like that it's a collection but it's curated so you get one lip gloss, one set of lashes, and then a beautiful shimmery eyeshadow palette. Now this eyeshadow palette is not my color vibes but the shades kind of remind me of that Bobbi Brown palette that had the beautiful like um, textured pans for holiday I think that launched that everyone was freaking out about this one looks like it's lesser expensive cousin and the gloss is like a beautiful neutrally you know champagne -y, nudie shade and then the lashes I don't really wear a lot of lashes so I don't really have like a personal opinion on these I know Angie kind of was like those are disgusting <laughs> and I'm just like I don't know I mean they're kind of cool for like New Year's. I don't know if they're wearable necessarily for every day, but I I like this collection. I, I wouldn't buy it myself, but I don't think it's horrible. I think Morphe's definitely done worse things in the last year. So, Fourth Ray Beauty launched some avocado products and they said, we know the guac is extra. That's why we made the perfect nourishing avocado duo. 
made the avocado superfood nourishing mask and avocado face milk. This is a $26 duo, otherwise you can buy them separate for $16 and $14 a piece. Now I haven't really tried anything from Fourth Ray Beauty. I know there's a few YouTubers out there that get it in PR and have said good things. I've heard decent things about the brand, but I don't really also need a lot of skincare right now. Skincare is another thing I'm considering not buying in 2020, or at least I'm not going to buy anything until I finish up what I have because I just, I just don't need it. So, um, it's nice to like admire these things. It's nice that it's affordable. I think affordable skincare, affordable, good skincare is so essential in the YouTube and beauty communities because people need access to good skincare. Skincare is something everyone should practice, I believe, because you can do everything you want to look better and feel better, but you know, if you aren't taking care of your skin at a young age, then it kind of almost is a little too late once you're like my age. So if people that are in their 20s and 30s have access to good skincare at an affordable price. I think that's a huge thing for the beauty industry and I think this is cool. I just I don't need it so I'm not gonna buy it. So Miss Kat Von D, she's been in a lot of hot water in 2019. Did that whole thing start in 2018 or 19? I'm not quite sure. I haven't bought anything from her in a long while. I do have a lot of her liquid lipsticks because her liquid lipsticks are some of my favorite. She makes some really nice nude shades. So I'm not gonna go out and throw everything I've already spent my money on, but I don't really plan on purchasing from her anytime soon, but I do want to talk about these because I do think the packaging is really pretty on the blushes, and I think she picked some really interesting shades. I really like those like burnt orange or like coral shades always get me because I love shades like that. My friend Nethmi was just talking was just talking about Max Burnt Pepper on her Instagram, and I was like, I kind of want it. Like, as soon as I have like spare cash, I might pick it up, but I'm also thinking of not buying blush this year. So maybe I should put a hold on that. But yeah, I love those like red, orange, coral, peachy blushes. Those are my favorite. So I think those shades are really fun. She did do some blushes a long time ago and they were in those duo pans and they were not good. So I'm glad she decided to do something new. So Smashbox is coming out with always on creme to matte lipsticks and I'm not really a big bullet lipstick wearer so this doesn't really appeal to me but I think Angie said that basically what they did was they took their liquid lipstick formula and then they did the same shades in a bullet lipstick which she thought was a great idea and I have to agree I mean especially for people that don't like liquid lipsticks I think this is awesome because if there were shades you really were interested in in the liquid lipstick formula you can try it now in a matte lipstick so that's smart. The next thing that I think is really beautiful, these are Charlotte Tilbury's new luxury palettes. She's got Queen of the Glow as well as the Rebel and I think these are so beautiful. Basically these are her quads. They're so pricey. They are 53 US dollars and the shades are beautiful. I think these two are some of my favorite color stories. I've been so into like the grungy greens lately. It's ridiculous. And that eggplant purple in the other quad is so stunning. So I think these are both beautiful, but I am not gonna pay $53 for those. Um, but I do think her shadows are really beautiful, especially on people with lighter skin tones. So. Beautylish has a lucky bag coming out and they do this every year. I believe for the last few years and they've got a few different options this time and I think it's a really cool idea because people are so into like mystery boxes and stuff lately so I know a lot of YouTubers are gearing up to buy a lucky bag and they give out like really good things like the really expensive one sometimes has like Natasha Denona palettes in there and like really good stuff so if I had a spare $150 lying around I would love to buy one but I spent all my money on Christmas and Black Friday and I don't get paid until after Christmas so I'm gonna miss that boat <laughs> because I don't have spare cash for it and that's okay. So the next thing that launch are these new Sequins Glam Glitter Liquid Eyeshadows from Marc Jacobs. They have Topaz Flash, Copperasi, Shimmy Dip, Smoked Glass, and Moonstoned and Gleam Girl. These are 26 US dollars. So 
I am so over the liquid shadows. They were all the rage. I bought the Stila ones and then I bought some from Pixie. And then I just really found myself never reaching for them. My main gig is like eyeshadow palettes. Okay, so that's another thing I should put on my no buy list as well is like single eyeshadows, like pot eyeshadows, cream eyeshadows, glitter, liquid. Like I need to put that on my list of things to not buy in 2020 because it just is such a waste. Like I'll use it for a little while and then the hype dies down and I'm like over it in an instant. So these are spendy too. I know people love Marc Jacobs, like the beauty brand. So I can see people going for it, but it's not my vibe and I'm okay with not picking that up. So NARS launched tinted glow boosters, introducing limited edition. Why is a glow booster limited edition? I don't understand. Tinted glow boosters, a customizable complexion enhancer with long-term skin benefits that adds an alluring glow and a soft focus effect to skin while extending the wear of makeup for up to 16 hours. Lightweight and layerable, it can be worn in a multitude of ways, alone, under foundation, or as a natural illumination on the high points of the face. Featuring NARS's exclusive jojoba complex, hydrogel complex, a dynamic combination of jojoba elixir for deep nourishment, Oh my god, there's so many jojobas in here. Um, but it's $39, and I think this sounds really cool. I used to be so into NARS foundation. Oh my gosh, the sheer glow was bay. Like, I still have a few bottles I'm planning on trying to use up in 2020. And I think this sounds wonderful, but it's not something I'm really on the market for. I have so many highlighters and face oils and stuff like that. I have so many ways of adding glow to my skin. So definitely not interested in that product. Now here's something I definitely am so curious about, but I don't know what I'm gonna do. So Fenty Beauty is launching new Snap Shadow Mix and Match eyeshadow palettes for $25 each, or you can get two for 45. That's cool, I didn't know you could do that. So a game-changing portable mini eyeshadow palette of six rich blendable shades in a range of matte to shimmer finishes. And I think that's wonderful. I did use the Fenty Moroccan Spice palette. I did pick it up back in the day when it launched and I really liked the eyeshadow formula. So I feel like if those shadows and these shadows are anything alike, I'm gonna really enjoy these new palettes so definitely keeping an eye out for those and I don't know I don't know what to get I love the neutral ones I think that pastel one is really cool and then there's the one that's like the grungy olive and the what is it called there's like an olive green I think it's number seven it looks so beautiful so very 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 curious to see what these are like and I think my Sephora gets Fenty the same time as it launches so maybe I'll do a little trip to Sephora on the 26th and check it out because I think I work on the 26th anyway so and then they're also doing a, a dry brush cleaning sponge for $18 I have the Veramona one by Sephora and that one is just fine so I won't be picking that up and then they're doing a precision blending brush for $24, a precision definition eyeshadow brush for $24, and then a plush eyeshadow brush for $24 as well. So, bit of a pricey brush set, but I know my friends, a lot of them have the Fenty brushes and they swear by them, so I think that's cool. Definitely not something I'm looking for, but I think it's cool that she's doing all these different options for her customers. So Violet Voss has launched a new palette. This is called the Best Life Number no. 2 palette. And basically it says this palette will inspire you to live your best life in your daily routine, on vacation, or at any special event. This all-in-one palette was designed to provide everything you need to create an eye look with highly pigmented matte shades that blend like butter, Foils that are wet to the touch and contain reflective pigments for a gorgeous shimmery finish. So I, I don't know. So Angie talked about this in her video where she said she saw this palette in stores, the first one. And we were both kind of just like, why is there so much pressed glitter on the one flap, those bigger pans? I don't know who's buying this and really enjoying the glitters. As far as the shades on the eyeshadow side of it, 
I feel like I have all those shades. Just that green shade called Home, I feel like looks exactly like the shade um, in my Give Me Glow palette. This is the shade Under the Tree, as well as Gifts Galore looks exactly like Food. So I'm sure I can easily dupe out this palette. And I do like the Violet Voss formula, but... I don't think this palette is very interesting to me, so for $49, it's definitely a pass. But maybe there's people out there that really like it. So Laneige is launching a Sika sleeping mask, and they describe it as a skin barrier strengthening mask. Helps to improve the skin's natural strength to create healthy skin that withstands external irritation with a natural glow effect. So I have the Laneige regular sleeping mask and I like it, but I don't feel like it's hydrating enough on its own. Most people use it as the last step on their nighttime skincare routine to help absorb more moisture to their face. So I like it, but it's definitely not something I would say like you need to go out and buy it. I don't know that it's worth the price point. So just keep that in mind, but I do think it's cool that they're expanding, of course. That's always interesting when brands are adding more things to their line. So I did see this on Ulta. This is Urban Decay's new expanded Stay Naked range with a powder foundation and some face trios as well. So I really like the Stay Naked foundation. It was one of my favorite foundations from this summer. I did not expect to like it. I tried a bunch of foundations that launched this summer and that one ended up being my favorite. So they have a Stay Naked The Fix powder foundation in 24 shades for $39. Stay Naked Threesome, so these are a bronzer, highlighter, and blush in one, and it's $36, and yeah, I'm not really into powder foundation, so don't see myself buying that, and then as far as the face powder palettes go, I think it's an interesting idea. I don't particularly love face palettes at this moment in time. I have way too many. Again, it's going to be one of those things that needs to go on my list of things not to buy in 2020. I want to declutter my face products and then just use the ones I have. So even though I think this is beautiful, I don't like that it doesn't have separate pans and I just don't need any more face palettes so I'm passing on both of those products. So the next thing I want to talk about is Sugar Rush Buzzworthy Collection and this is Tarte's like sister brand or something like that and they teased this yellow honey type palette a while ago and people have been like where's that palette where's that palette and it's finally here so it's called the BU eyeshadow palette for $27 fly squad brush set lip sip vegan lip oil um buzz worthy for $15 sugar coat velvet liquid lipstick cake butter whip body butter in cake pop scrunchies and then be the change make a bag so I think this is adorable for like your tween and you know like a 11 year old I can see them really enjoying this palette Personally, I think it's beautiful, but it's not my vibes at all. So I'd be interested in seeing if Teresa is dead picks that up because she is a sucker for a yellow eyeshadow palette. So I'm very, very curious to see that. And then there is a new palette coming from Too Faced in February. And it's basically a sneak peek from Beauty News. And it's a, let's see here. Um... It's the Born This Way Complexion Inspired Shadow Palette he created using the beautiful and natural nuances of our Born This Way foundation shades to create the ultimate natural looks. Where, whether you stay in the shades that most match your skin tone for a modern nude look or go to the extreme opposite for more natural dramatic looks, all using the beautiful palette of real skin tones. So that's the whole inspiration. It's supposed to be like different skin tones. I personally don't get it, but you know what? If you fall for that marketing, girl, that's on you. That's all I have to say about that. Stila launched new lip products. It's called the Shine Power Lip Vinyl. I'm not really into glossy lips that don't dry down. It's like, honestly, my own personal hell. If you think of a lipstick that's glossy and doesn't dry down, especially where I live, girl, it is windy AF, and I cannot afford to have my, like, hair stuck on my lip glossy vinyl-y mm, mm, so I'm staying away from that 100%. This palette really caught my eye. This is the new Zodiac palette from BH Cosmetics. It's called the Crystal Zodiac palette and this one is really different I think and 
I don't know, I just love those like marble pans they threw in there. I love the primary colored mattes. The original BH Cosmetics Zodiac palette is bomb. Like, there are some beautiful grungy shades in that palette and the Love Science palette was definitely more bright. This one I think is a interesting palette. I don't know how I feel about the marketing image because it's so hard to gauge. I did see Lacey bought this palette and she posted a picture and it honestly looked like a cartoon. Like it was very, um, almost like unreal. So I can't imagine seeing it in person and like how I would feel. And they also did a brush set, which I always love brush sets because BH especially makes such affordable brushes. It might also be a nice gift to myself, but I probably won't get it at this point. It's been out for a while and I don't really need it, but it's definitely very eye-catching. Okay, so ColourPop launched another collection. This came out last week, but again, I'm so behind on my Will I Buy It video. So this is their like fourth collab, I think, with I Am Becky G or Becky G. I don't know why I just said her Instagram handle, but Becky G and ColourPop, and it's called the Hola Chola collection, I believe. And so there's a 12 pan all matte eyeshadow palette, which I think it's ColourPop's first time doing an all matte eyeshadow palette. Is that right? I feel like it is, but I can't quite remember. They also did some liquid lipstick kits, two pressed brown, two pressed powder bronzers, and a brand new brush tip liquid liner, as well as a brand new cherry roller gloss. That cherry cherry roller gloss, as soon as I saw it, it took me back to being a kid because my mom would love those roller glosses. When I first moved here and she came to visit, she wanted to find them and I was like, mom, I don't think they make those anymore. So I predict that in 2020, ColourPop's gonna come out with a bunch of shades of those. So I'm not like the biggest fan of cherry flavor, so I'm gonna hold off, but I'm so excited to pick some of those up when they come out with more shades because I'm definitely gonna be gifting some to my mom. So Tatcha is launching a new skin product and this actually sounds really cool. So this is a serum stick treatment and touch-up balm, a concentrated treatment and touch-up balm packed with 80% squalene, hyaluronic acid, and Japanese lemon balm to target, to target dryness and signs of aging. I just love the sound of that. I love the idea of it being a stick because I hate sticking my hands in moisturizers, creams, masks, like I hate all of it. So $42 launching on January 2nd. Kind of have my eye on that. We'll see if I pick that up or not. Technically, so it is skincare, so I probably won't. <laughs> this is exciting. Makeup by Mario is collabing with Sephora to release some limited edition brush sets. So there's three sets. That's the master brush set that includes all 13 limited edition brushes for 158. And then there is a limited edition six piece complexion set for 92 and then an eye brush set for $65. So very exciting. I feel like, you know, Mario is like, honestly, he is a master of makeup. He deserves these good things happening to him, I think, because there's so many like YouTubers and stuff that get all these like collab opportunities and work with these big brands. But people like Mario that work on celebrities and do this type of makeup and artistry, I think also deserve to collab with brands like this. So it's nice to see it like balance out where it's not just all the makeup artists getting all the collabs and and it's not just all the YouTubers getting collabs. I think it's nice that brands can do a little bit of both. I think that's important. And I do hope we see more of that in 2020 as well. So Milani, oh my goodness. Milani is trying to come for all the drugstore brands. And I'm telling you, they're the ones to beat. So they launched six new eyeshadow palettes to their Gilded range, including the Gilded Gold that they did release as part of their holiday. But they did a luster light, a pastel, a twilight, a coast, a nude. Like, that's amazing. And I did try the Gilded Gold palette. I didn't, like, love, love it. But you guys know I'm not a huge, like, drugstore eyeshadow person. So I think they're good, though. I don't think they're horrible by any means. And I was able to pick mine up for, like, $14.99 at Target. So I would wait because I think you can get these even cheaper at Target. But... Yeah, I think this is so cool, like a pastel palette at the drugstore, like who would have thought that that was gonna happen in 2019? 
Okay, so this is exciting. Kathleen Lights launched her Polish Gems Winter Collection with her new nail polish brand, Lights Lacquer, and I'm actually wearing the shade, is this Alexanderite? Um, it's like a beautiful purple color, and I just love her nail polish formula so, so much, and so I just... I couldn't even say no. I like bought it when I saw it and I was really doing great with my nails. They were like long and healthy and nice and then I just felt like going short so I cut them pretty short but I will regrow them and I can't wait to paint my nails all the different shades because I did pick up the whole set because I'm like a savage, you know? The ColourPop added more things to their holiday collection. They came out with a pressed illuminator in champagne bubbles, a liquid highlighter in champagne bubbles, and then two face brushes, a flat kabuki brush and a medium fluff brush. So I don't think ColourPop has any of these products. I think these are kind of like brand new products to their lineup. The brushes look really nice. I have a lot of ColourPop brushes, honestly. I think it's one of the more underrated things in their product line um, is their brushes. And I think, you know, especially for somebody starting out, they're great and somebody like me that uses them all the time. I love having different affordable brushes from different brands and I think Colourpop makes really good ones. Okay, so this was so exciting. I kind of, I want to buy this palette so bad but I missed the boat on it. So this is two new palettes by Morphe. They're part of their artistry palette. So 18B is Making Bank and then 18F is, is Talking Flirty. And Making Bank, oh my gosh, I just... That green shade, like you put a shade called, what does that say, dollar dollar in my hands, I just think I'm the shit. And also that yellow shade called jackpot, like whoo, those are so stunning. I know Amy Loves Makeup bought this palette, so I'm really, really excited to see what she thinks of that palette when she gets her hands on it. So Charlotte Tilbury is coming out with a new palette. This is her 12 pan palettes. These are the ones that are like hella expensive. And this is gonna be her Pillow Talk Instant Eye Palette. And I don't know. I just, I just know the Pillow Talk quad did not work for me. It's too light and honestly, I can look at this palette and tell you that if you are darker than me, I highly doubt this is gonna show up on you. I don't wanna like rain on anyone's parade because maybe somebody out there is willing to slap on a white base and go to town with this, but in my personal opinion, looking at this, I would say save your money. It's not gonna be worth it. My friend bought the holiday palette that she came out with that looks like this in the bluish gray packaging and she hated that palette. She totally regretted it and she bought it in Sri Lanka so it wasn't even like she could return it. So that would be my words of wisdom on the Charlotte Tilbury palettes. Okay, Wayne Goss did launch his holiday brush. This is the it's like a fan brush and it's already on Beautylish, I believe. I forgot to look at how much this brush was, but I have this brush. So this Sonia um, G Sculptor 2 brush, I remember when this came out, everyone was using it for like bronzer and I was like, oh cool, I could use it for bronzer. And it's so spendy that I bought it on the Beautylish payment plan, but I honestly low-key like regret it. And so therefore, just having experienced that brush, I don't feel like I need the, I don't feel like I need the Wayne Goss brush. Kesha's brand finally launched. It's called Kesha Rose Beauty by Hip Dot. So I'm guessing it's like a sub brand of Hip Dot. And she came out with this like circle palette and a bunch of other stuff. But as far as the palette goes, I heard mixed thoughts on this. I think some people really thought it looked cool. Some people thought it didn't look cool. And I must say I'm definitely in the second thought process. I think this is so hideous. I hate how like there's a circle perfectly and then three shades in the middle like mm, cringe. I don't know. And these pans look huge. I just really hate everything about the whole thing. So I am more than happy to look the other way with that one. And then BH launched a collection with Jose, um, who is a creator here on Instagram. I don't really follow him, but he is basically a young upcoming YouTuber, it looks like. And I really like the shade he picked out called Cocoon. It's like a beautiful green color. That's really the only shade that speaks to me. And I'm definitely adding um, BH Cosmetics on my list of things that I'm not allowed to buy in 2020 because I just... 
that's another one of those brands that's like so affordable. I don't even think about it. I just buy, you know what I mean? So I'm done doing that in 2020. Shard Cosmetics launched a Moonfall Trio. It's a mini collection of three brand new eyeshadow singles. And these are so cute. It launched on December 12th at 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So it's already out and it is $15 for the shadows in a bundle. I think these are gorgeous, but honestly, I have shades like this a hundred times over and I have the beautiful Clinod jewel tone, so I don't need any of that. And then Manny's collab with Morphe. I don't know if I talked about it in my last Will I Buy video, but I basically saw the swatches and was very, very underwhelmed by the whole thing. And it honestly looks like they ripped off his Makeup Geek palette, which I don't know why he would do that to Marlena, but whatever. Like, I don't know why he didn't use the opportunity to create something a little more unique. I'm sure his fans would love to get their hands on the Makeup Geek palette, but it's gone now, so do something different. Don't do the same thing. Plus, his own brand makes such gorgeous products. I feel like it was such a downgrade for him to do that palette with Morphe. So NARS launched a new palette as well as some bombs. This is the Afterglow eyeshadow palette. 12 shades in matte, satin, sheer, and metallic finishes, as well as some Afterglow, afterglow lip balms, as well as a cheek palette. I haven't really seen the cheek palette. I know some of the YouTubers I follow did get NARS PR for this collection. I personally think that it's... Uh, you know, not really my style. I'm kind of over NARS. I used to be so into NARS, and now I'm so over NARS, so no plans on picking that up. Pat McGrath Star Wars Collection did end up releasing. Um, I don't even know if you could call it a release. I think they did, like, a few things here, a few things there. Like, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. She definitely botched it, I feel like. Pat McGrath is so up here but they're like slowly taking a nosedive for a lot of people like Angie was so excited for the Star Wars collection and now I almost feel bad because she was waiting for it to launch at Selfridges and it never did and then it launched on the Pat McGrath website and so it's just been so sad to like see people get so defeated about the unavailability and the lack of information on these launches. So if I could offer up some constructive criticism to Pat McGrath, I would say like get your launches together. Don't make it so difficult for people to get your stuff. Like if you don't want to announce the date, that's fine, but don't give conflicting information because then it spreads and it like turns into a whole mess and then people are just unhappy, which I think really, really sucks. So just wanted to address that. And then she also ended up launching this new limited edition packaging for her bronze seduction palette. So this is a Burdoff Goodman exclusive. And yeah, people are just so confused by Pat McGrath these days. Like, I know people that love her brand and I was getting texts like, saying like, what is she doing? Why is she coming out with this stuff? And I'm like, I don't know, girlfriend. Doesn't make sense to me either. But we're all clowns, so. <laughs> you know, we just keep hanging on. Um, another thing that Trend Mood did mention is P. Louise is coming out with a new eyeshadow palette. Now, I've since recently fallen in love with the P. Louise eye primer base, but I saw her palette, like the first palette they came out with, and I honestly thought it was hideous, so I want no part of it, but I thought it was interesting that they are working on a palette, so I just thought I'd mention it here today to talk about. And then I also saw this collab, and I don't really talk about nail polish a ton, but I thought I would mention this because I used to be such a fan of Young Wild and Polish, and she has a collab with a brand called Glitter Days, and this is called the On Holiday Collection, and those shades actually look really beautiful, and I'm definitely, like, tempted to pick it up, but I haven't, haven't, but I do think it is gorgeous. And the other thing I wanted to talk to you guys about is the new Sydney Grace eyeshadow palettes that are coming out, I believe, after the holidays. So they posted the reveal of their palette and they said there's going to be a lighter version as well as a deeper version. So this picture I'm showing you is just the lighter version and the palette will be available Monday, January 13th. So not too long from now. I'm very excited. This palette is definitely not my vibe, like right off the bat. 
But things like this always surprise me because I always think like I'm not going to enjoy something. But I love Sydney Grace's formula so much. I feel like I'm just going to enjoy it more than I can even imagine if that makes sense to you guys. So I feel like I've been blabbing for like an hour as per usual. So this is going to be a nice long video for you guys. I hope you've been enjoying Vlogmas. Thank you guys so much for watching all my videos. Thank you so much for your constant support. My goal for 2020 is to hit 5k on my channel so i'm hoping we can get there fingers crossed and i hope you guys are having a wonderful holiday season i will see you guys in my next video tomorrow bye